So I've been wanting to build one of these since I first saw it online. And when Formbot offered to send me their box turtle kit, I couldn't say no. Now the box turtle is an open source AMS style filament changer for clipper printers. Meaning that with this bad boy, I can do up to four filaments on my one tool head Voron. And there are other ways to accomplish this like the carrot feeder, but I really like the compact footprint of the box turtle and now its ability to have a dried enclosure, and I just think it looks pretty sick. So what is this video? I wanna cover my thoughts on using the FormBot kit to build a box turtle, and let you guys know my honest thoughts on the contents of the kit. As far as setting it up and getting it working, I'm gonna leave that for another video. I feel like this video is probably already gonna be long enough, and using and tuning the box turtles kind of outside of the scope of the kit that you get from FormBot. So to get started, you'll need to print all the parts for the box turtle itself, which they provide a configurator to get you started on the box turtle website in which I chose other kit, normal skirts, hub skirts, printed corners, LED corners, no hardware, plain, and yes to the turtleneck option. Now keep in mind for this FormBot kit, you will need to grab the printed corner STL that is on their site and print that instead of the one from Box Turtle. This has an additional caveat that the one from the Box Turtle has built-in supports and the one from FormBot does not. So you'll have to play around with supports in your slicer, although I got it to work just fine. If you choose to do so, you can get all the printed parts from FormBot for 85 bucks, which really isn't that bad considering you need at least one color that's over a whole spool, if not two colors, some TPU, and some clear filament for the corners. So you're gonna need at least three, if not four rolls of filament to print this whole thing. So 85 bucks isn't a bad price. Now what you can't get from FormBot is dependent on your printer. And it's the printed parts for your tool head to put a filament cutter and support for a filament sensor in there. FormBot does provide the parts for the filament matrix if you're running a stealth burner. So print the parts that match your extruder and your hot end from the filament matrix GitHub, not the filament matrix, so you can be ready to use those parts from the kit. And once you have all your printed parts, you're ready to start building. Since mine is already built, I'm gonna throw it back to my past self where I'm gonna show you a few things along the way. I didn't do a step-by-step -step guide because not only is that probably boring, but I feel like it's unnecessary since the box turtle documentation is so well put together. They have 3D models at every step. You can spin it and slide it, whatever you wanna do, and everything is explained extremely well. This video is in chronological order through the steps. So if you just follow along through the steps with me, uh, you'll be in the same spot. And when I got to this step where it tells you to check your shafts, I thought, oh, okay, well, let me go do that. Let me make sure FormBot gave us something good. And they are. What FormBot provides is very high quality and there's no issues with these shafts that they provide. I sped right past it in the previous section, but it talks about how one of the worst parts of the build is these ECAS couplers. And as far as I can tell, they're right. Getting it into the printed parts isn't so bad, but getting these blue plastic like collars in is awful. Uh, what I ended up doing was sticking them on a hard piece of plastic and taking my trusty LTT screwdriver and just smashing them in there. I happened to be watching the Wayne show while I was doing this, but the LTT screwdriver didn't fail me. And maybe there's a better way, maybe you guys know a better way, but just smashing them in there just seemed to work just fine. And the printed parts to help you get them in were great. I recorded this clip because right here it tells you to check the wiring guide to make sure you know like how long the wires are supposed to be for whatever section you're at because there's four different sections where the wires are different lengths and FormBot provides well documented pieces of wire and connectors that show you exactly what length they are so you know exactly which part to use at the step that you're on. It's great, they label it the same way they do in the wiring guide and it's a fantastic way to provide a kit to make it as easy as possible for the user. At this point, I had all the extruders and the spoolers put together and it was a very simple and straightforward process. And it's a big part due to how FormBot wired or labeled all the wiring. So it made this process extremely simple and everything was very straightforward. Now, the thing is, uh, this isn't a problem with the FormBot kit itself, but really the box turtles parts. This part on the spooler, I had a really tough time, number one, just printing this. But number two, even after it was printed, um, in PLA, it just kind of snapped. So while you can print most things in this kit from PLA, I definitely recommend uh, printing this out of something that's not PLA, like ABS. 
and the motor plates obviously need to be printed in ABS. Here's the part that I printed in ASA. Um, I wasn't super happy with this part. The ASA wasn't super dry, but I had to do it because the PLA parts, like I said, would just kind of snap here on the side. I think PLA is just too brittle for something like this. But overall, I think this is probably the worst part in the box turtle, um, which is not Formbot's fault, which is strange because the whole box turtle is designed really well. And the problem really is just this absolutely tiny little thing in the logo that has to support the whole rest of the logo that I find is just kind of difficult to print no matter what material you're doing it out of. If you guys have any tips on printing this part, I'd love to reprint these and make them look a little better. But that's just a warning from me that these parts were a little tricky to print. This is just a note that for the turtleneck, the two micro switches that are unlabeled in the kit are what this is for. You have other micro switches that are labeled with the lengths and everything. And those are specifically for the sensors that go under, not for your turtleneck. So just know that the two that are unlabeled are for that. And then in the instructions, it says, depending on your board, you might need to snip off some of the leads on the bottom of the board. And I did have to do that with the board that was provided to me by Formbot. Now, the biggest and only real issue I have with this kit is that how they handled the power and CAN cable. In the kit, they included two lengths of 18 gauge wire and two lengths of 22 gauge wire, where I can only assume that the 18 gauge wire is for your 24 volt and the 22 gauge is for CAN. Now, the AFC light board uses a Molex MX 3.0 connector, which specifies that you need wire between 30 and 18 gauge, which seems fine, but the outside insulator can't exceed 1.85 millimeters. The wire that Formbot provides is way bigger than that, and so there's no way to get the crimp connectors onto the wire. Now I checked the Box Turtle Discord and was told that 22 gauge is the minimum, so I got some nice 22 gauge wire that has four conductors inside, where the insulator on each one of those wires is able to fit onto the crimp connector. Now this solution wouldn't work for CAN, since you need a twisted pair for CAN, and I could have used a wire that has two uh, conductors, but this is what I had, and I had available from a friend that was free, so I wasn't gonna complain. I reached out to Formbot about this and they did say that they would update it, which is great, but only on the newer kits, anything that already exists in a warehouse, they can't just go through and update it. So if you get a kit, I would order some nice 20 gauge wire that doesn't have an insulator bigger than 1.85 millimeters. So that way you can put it into those Molex crimp connectors, which they do give you, and you can attach it to your AFC board and power it. Now you're also gonna need some ring or spade terminals to attach to the power supply in your printer if that's how you choose to do it, but you also are going to need a way to connect those ends from 24 volt and ground to something to power it. You're also gonna to need to have a crimp tool, but if you already built a Voron, then you probably already have one. So far, my wiring job seems to have worked and the board does have power. It's connected via USB to the printer over here. This is a temporary solution. I'll probably make it a little tidier later, but it's connected to the M8P via this USB um, extension, whatever you wanna call it, hub. So yeah, time to flash the board. I just followed the AFC light manual and flashed it using the USB settings that are right here. And it's flashed and I have my ID that I can put in the clipper. Keen-eyed viewers might have noticed that I did get an error right here. And what this error is, and you can see it says error during download get status. So all it did was it erred on getting the status after it rebooted after flashing. And then it errors out at the end and that's what that error means. This is very common when you use DFU Util. And you can see that I did get my uh, ID to put into Clipper, so we know that it worked. So if you get this error, I wouldn't think anything about it. This is where the Formbot kit really shines, where I'm starting to install the spoolers, and because each of the wirings has exactly the length of run, the instruction manual calls for your run with 550 millimeters, and now I know exactly which spooler it is that I plug into this slot because all of them are perfectly labeled, which is really awesome. Now this is an area where there's a nice to have with the kit that it doesn't include, but I don't think it's a big problem. The PTFE tubes that connect here, Formbot supplies you just, you know, a run of tube and you have to cut it yourself, but they do provide you this nice PTFE cutter tool, which is very handy. I'm glad I have one of these now. And it does provide a very clean edge on the PTFE tube and you don't have to worry about trying to do it with a knife or anything like that and messing up the edge. So you do have to cut the PTFE tubes yourself, but this included tool is very nice and it works out really well. The instructions for the box turtle do mention it. I went ahead and plugged in the PTFE tube to the extruder and then 
I stick it in the spooler and then I mount it down. So that way you don't have to try to bend the PTFP tube with everything already installed. I got everything installed and routed and I'm able to tell which plug is which with these same labels. I made sure that those stayed at the end while routing it through the zip ties and then I can figure out what to plug in where through the manual. Connected all the LEDs, which there is a step for that. And then there are the corner LEDs, which I believe just like the LEDs that are on the bottom, they daisy chain together. And then I just need to figure out which uh, port to plug them in down here. But for now, everything is hooked up. I followed the instructions for how to route everything down here. I think it might have made more sense to take all of your switches and kind of route them here. So that way they can connect on this side and then all your motors and stuff connect down on this side. I didn't try it, maybe someone else will, maybe there's a reason it's not like that, but somehow that seemingly makes sense to me. Let me know what you guys think. To get the Bowden tubes beveled, I just used a drill bit like this, six millimeters, and just hand spun it until they were nice and beveled. In case you're a little dum dumb like me, the clear plastic part snaps into the outside of the corner. Not the inside, not down here. It's on the outside of this part. I'm not sure if the design of the box turtle calls for this bottom piece that Formbot provides. I'm not the biggest fan of how the feet just kind of like hold it on. I'm assuming this is what you're supposed to do. I couldn't figure out any other way. If it's supposed to go in the extrusions, that's honestly more annoying. But you kind of have to just like take the feet off to get to the bottom. It does have holes to adjust the uh, tension on the extruders. If I were doing this again, and probably in the future, I'm probably just gonna take this off. I don't really see a huge need for this to be here. Well, I actually already uninstalled it because I forgot that I had not plugged in my power cable or my USB cable, and there's no way to do that if the bottom is on. And I don't know where I'm gonna put this yet, so. There's really no point in me having that on at all. Another thing that I'm thinking about now too is this USB cable is probably like two, two and a half feet long. And I don't think that's going to be long enough. I mean, if you wanted to set it on top of the printer, I still don't even think that'd be long enough. And even right beside, in my opinion, it's still just not long enough to connect here and come out and go out to your printer. So a longer USB cable would also be nice. Uh, now that it's on and running, yeah, that's definitely not staying connected. The fan is way too loud for me, and i um, not sure that it super needs it, but that's pretty annoying. Maybe you could replace it with a different one, but this one ain't it. Now that it's plugged in and turned on, the first thing I want to do is test the lanes to make sure the spoolers are going in the right direction. And I'm able to test lane two, and it should rotate as if it's uh, rewinding the filament. But if I test it, you can see that it's loading the filament. And so all you have to do is change the configuration like I'm going to show on the screen here. And then like this lane, you can see that it's rotating in the right direction. So a very simple change. And then in order to get your corner LEDs to work, you just change the configuration like I have here. And you'll be able to get those to work, assuming you plug it into LED 2 on the AFC light board. The last thing you're going to need to set up is your filament cutter. You don't have to run one, but the FormBot kit includes the provisions to run one, so the Filamatrix is the obvious choice. You're just going to have to make sure that no matter what extruder you have, you have provisions to install that filament sensor, and you have extra GPIO pins on your tool headboard to be able to plug those in. For the SB2209 USB, which is what I'm using, I had to piggyback into my tap sensor, which has an extra GPIO pin I wasn't using, so I'm able to get that filament sensor into my Galileo 2 extruder. And it's hard for me to show this section because it's very dependent on what you have on your printer. You might have a stealth burner, you might not have a stealth burner, so you're just going to have to print the files for your hot end, your extruder, your tool head setup, and then you can use the provisions from FormBot if you have a stealth burner and get that installed. So where does this leave us? Well, I have a fully functional box turtle, although it's completely unconfigured, nothing has been done, and I've verified that it's working, but it's going to take me a while to set this thing up. I think that's kind of the point. Um, it's set up and configured how you want it to be. 
You have the default configuration file that I showed you some edits to get it to work specifically for this kit. But beyond that, it's kind of up to you. Um, the Formbot kit itself kind of gets you the build, but it doesn't really get you through all of the tuning process. Now I have the filament cutter installed on my tool head and I'm just gonna have to go through that. And like I said, I'll make a different video and I'll kind of show you guys how I set up and tune this thing once I get it up and running. And I'm able to show you guys what I did to get it um, in a working state. I think for $200, it's a very compelling deal. You can get a box turtle with LED corners for 200 bucks and they provide the provisions for the fill matrix, which is awesome. And aside from the power cable, which I don't think is that big of a deal, considering if you already built a Voron, you probably already have experience uh, crimping cables and all that stuff. And if they were to configure the kit to be either CAN or USB and just provide you with a fully working power cable, then your printer would need to have provisions for whichever one they chose, so CAN or USB. And maybe that's not how you'd want to go. Or they'd have to create two kits, CAN or USB, which I think is just kind of a logistical nightmare. So with that being said, you will have to pay attention to those kinds of things when you order this kit for your printer you're gonna to have to make sure that you do have provisions to plug in another CAN or USB cable to your printer. You need to make sure your tool head has the availability for the sensors and the fill and matrix. So it's not just kind of you can buy the kit and just get it working and set it up. Remember, this is all DIY stuff. So that's why to me, the power cable doesn't feel like as big of an issue as it could be, because at the end of the day, all of this stuff is DIY and oh no, you had to do something DIY in your DIY product. It's not that big of a deal. If you guys are interested in the box turtle, there will be an affiliate link down in the description. If you guys wanna support the channel, it's up to you. If you guys have a question, if you have a box turtle, if you think there's something else wrong with the kit, if you think it's a good kit, whatever it is, leave a comment down below and we'll talk about it. If you learned something, leave a like. And remember, if you have a multi-material unit, if you have a Voron, even if you don't, if you subscribe, your prints will stay buttery smooth. See you guys in the next one.